In this video, we're going to take a look at how to send self-destructing encrypted messages and files across the internet using a Docker container called Cryptgen. But first, a quick message from today's video sponsor. This episode is sponsored by Linode, the largest independent cloud computing provider. If you don't want to, or can't for whatever reason, self-host applications the way we talk about on this channel, Linode provides virtual servers that make it easy and affordable for you to host anything in the cloud. You can set up any of the applications that they have available in their marketplace with just a few clicks, or you can set up your own Docker VPS and install basically whatever you'd like in a Docker container. They have load balancers and firewalls available to help keep your apps online and safe. If you run into any trouble getting set up, Linode comes with amazing 24 seven customer support by phone or ticket, along with hundreds of guides and tutorials to help you get started. Sign up today at linode.com slash dbtech and get a $100 60 day credit on your new Linode account. Links are in the description. So as I said, this is Encryption. And I'm, I'm guessing on the pronunciation of that, but it's like uh, encrypt and pigeon. So encryption. So basically the way this works is you can, uh, once everything is up and running, of course, uh, put in a, a note uh, if you wanted to do that. I just go ahead and paste in a couple of uh, lorem ipsum paragraphs there. So then if you come down here and click on advanced, you can uh, kind of customize each individual note or file uh, as far as would you like it to be a certain number of views or would you like to switch it over and be a certain number of minutes before that message, again, whether it's a text message or uh, an actual file, you can decide do you want it to be a certain number of views or a certain number of minutes before that actually self-destructs. Uh, so I actually really dig that they've done this. In fact, somebody here recently asked if I knew of a service that would do this and I didn't. I recently came across uh, Cryptgen because of Reddit this morning and uh, it turns out that they just recently, as of the update this morning, I believe, uh, released the ability to add files or send files that will self-destruct after a certain number of views, or in this case, even after a certain time limit. So kind of coming back uh, to, to this area here, right here you can see, uh, right there you can see the max allowed file size is 15.3 megs. I set that to be 16. We got 15.3 megs out of the deal. Um, and basically what that means is per transaction, how big should you allow your files or messages to be? And you can actually go a step further saying, I only want to allocate a certain amount of total resources um, in, in, my, in my setup. And we'll I'll kind of cover that when we go through the setup process on how that works. But, um, but basically we can see what is the max allowable file size or message size. Uh, if we click, uh, we come back over to here, uh, let's click on file. So right here you can, you know, just click this, go to your file manager and uh, upload share files that way again within the realm of uh, what's possible given your file size limits. Um, so then let's, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Let's do this. Let's, let's switch this back. Let's paste our paragraphs back in there. We're going to say, I'm going to make this available uh, for three views, and then we can go ahead and click on create. And then we get this shareable link right here. So we'll go ahead and click that. And then just to make sure we're 100% uh, doing this uh, the right way, in my opinion, we're gonna, op we're gonna open up Edge, which I know is not the right way to do basically anything, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and paste in that long URL. And we're gonna talk about these URLs and some different things uh, here in just a moment as well. But if I click on that, so here we see where it says, click below to show and delete the note if the counter has reached its limit. Um, Typographically, this is wrong, but whatever. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and click on show the note. Um, and here it says, you will not get a chance to see this note again. Now that's, there's a little bit of their code I think they can tweak to fix this because I did set it to be uh, three views. Now, uh, the other thing that we're gonna notice here is that it didn't really, it sort of kept the formatting, like it kept it in two separate lines. Uh, however, I would like to see this um, wrap versus scroll. Uh, maybe, maybe there's a reason you would want it to scroll versus wrap. I don't know. Uh, but but me personally, I would rather see it wrapped down and actually be formatted in a paragraph versus being really wide and scrolling this way. So, so now we've gone ahead and we have viewed it. So uh, what I'm going to do is just paste this in here a second time. And then we're going to click on show note. Now that we've looked at this twice now. Uh, remember, we set it to be th uh, visible three times. So what I'm going to do is open this a third time and we're gonna click on show note. Now, again, you'll notice on all of these, it says you will not get a chance to view this note again. And that's just because, again, there, there should be a counter or something in there, like in the code that, that actually 
determines whether or not that message shows up. Uh, I, but, but I do think that it shouldn't say how many times that note is available. It should only show up if uh, the, the last number has been reached or, or something. Uh, anyway, let's do this one more time. We're gonna paste that in there a fourth time. And now because we've reached that, that, that max number of views, now the note is no, no longer available on the system. It has been deleted. Um, so it's no longer available for anybody for any reason. Like even, even as a server admin, it's gone. I can't see it, it's been deleted. Um, and we'll talk about why here in just a second. Um, also on here, uh, since, we're, since we're still here, we'll click on new note, just so we kind of go back to this, this screen here. Uh, down here in the bottom left, we can click um, and switch from auto or light to dark to auto uh, based on your system preferences. Uh, of course, I like all my stuff to be in dark mode as often as possible. Uh, and then down here, we've got, uh, we've got some links um, that we can um, go to the homepage where we are. Uh, we can go to the about page where it talks about it. In fact, let's cover this here in just a moment. And right here, if we click on code, it'll take you over to their uh, GitHub repository. So let's jump back over to here where we can take a look at uh, what it says. Uh, Cryptgen is a secure open source sharing note slash file service Service inspired by PrivNote. And I, I dig that they actually left the link in there so you can come over and take a look at PrivNote. Um, so we come back over, how does it work? Each note has a 512 bit generated ID that is used to retrieve the note. The note is then encrypted uh, with AES in GCM mode on the client side and then sent to the server. Data is stored in memory, so it's never actually on your hard drive. It all gets stored in your system RAM, whatever you've got designated there. And I'll, again, I'll show you that here in just a moment. Uh, so data is stored in memory and never persisted on disk. Uh, the server never sees the encrypted key and cannot decrypt the contents of the note, even if it tried to. So again, if I were to go in and try to access it, I wouldn't be able to because of the way it's encrypted, because it's stored on RAM, I've got no access to it. So I, I really dig that. Um, so like it says here, features, server cannot decrypt the contents due to the client side encryption. Uh, it has view and time constraints, like we already showed, whether you've got a certain number of views or a certain amount of time before it self-destructs. Um, and, and again, like I said, it's in memory, so there's no persistence to it. Uh, if you restart this container, you'll probably lose whatever is currently being stored. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Um, so the, the tech stack, the back end is written in Rust and the front end is uh, Svelte and TypeScript. And you're welcome to check out and audit the source code. Again, if you click that, uh, it'll take you right over to their GitHub so that they're being very transparent about how their software works. And I really do appreciate that. Uh, the attributions they've got, the icons were made by FreePick and Flat Icon, and we're currently on version 1.3.0. So now that we've taken a look at how CryptGen works, uh, let's take a look at how to get it installed on your server. In order to take a look at how to install this, what we're gonna do is head over to their GitHub page. Now they do actually have a, a, a hub.docker.com uh, repository as well, uh, but we're just gonna take a look at this. I'll have links to everything down below. Um, but of course you can check out their, uh, their, their demonstration like we've already uh, done on, on my uh, personal server here, but let's scroll down. Uh, where we can take a look at their Docker Compose uh, just right there. So uh, if we take a look at this, it's version 3.7. Uh, we've got two services. The first one is memcached. Uh, that's how we're actually going to store the files in RAM. Um, so we're going to use a memcached uh, ver uh, with the tag of 1-alpine. So below that, we've got an entry point uh, where, where we've got memcached, uh, uh, reserving 128 megs. And then this next variable right here is saying, uh, what's the max uh, amount of storage you want available per entry, like per note, per file, per whatever. Um, so you can set your total max memory and then your per message memory by adjusting those two. And like it says here, uh, customize at your free will, however you wanna handle that. Uh, uh, is perfectly fine. And then below that, we've got our app uh, that has uh, the Cupcake Army CryptGen latest tag. Uh, it depends on uh, memcached, uh, obviously for storage. Uh, below that, I, again, we can set our file size limit here. Uh, make sure that this number matches whatever number you put up here or or vice versa, however however you wanna look at that. And then below that, we've got ports. Uh, the the uh, application runs on port 5000 internally. Uh, so when I set this up on my server, uh, so right here, we've got, um, I, I put mine on port 5800 and you can see that I reserved 256 megs and 16 megs for total memory and uh, per entry memory. So that's how it's set up. Now, there are some things to keep in mind here. Uh, like it says right above this, uh, this Docker Compose, HTTPS is required. Otherwise, browsers will not support the cryptographic functions. And so basically, let's take a look at that real quick because I know it'll come up. 
uh, here we are, we're on a local IP address on port 5800. And if I then, oops, and come over here and I copy that same lorem ipsum text. It could be a file, it could be whatever, and click on create. It says, could not create, please try again. Um, and again, this is because we're not using uh, HTTPS because we're doing this on a local IP. Um, so this is one of those things that you really would want to put on a domain. Um, and to do that was actually very, fairly straightforward. Here we go. So uh, here are my Nginx proxy manager settings. I've got my domain name. My scheme is HTTP because there is no self-signed certificate in the uh, in the container, uh, that might be a cool option if they were to add that as well. Um, but again, we've also got port 5800, we're caching assets, blocking common exploits. We've got WebSocket support. Um, and then under SSL, I'm just using um, an SSL that I downloaded from Cloudflare. Uh, if you wanna follow along using that method, you can absolutely do that. I made a video about that a while back. I will try to have that linked in the description as well. And then of course we forced our SSL HTTP2 support, HSTS and HSTS subdomains. And that's all it took to get this set up on a domain. Um, so, and then at that point, uh, you know, I can, oops, I can click on cancel there and open this up and I can send uh, files and messages uh, just however I'd like to do that to whoever uh, very, very easily knowing that that file or message will expire after however many uh, views or however much time I've decided to give it. So guys, that is Cryption. Pretty cool, a very, very easy to set up and use, but a very, very cool uh, tool I, I think a lot of people will, will have some fun with. Uh, again, somebody inadvertently requested this here a while back, uh, again, asking if I knew of a service that would allow for uh, files to self-delete after X number of views. And uh, luckily I came across this uh, earlier and wanted to share it with you guys. So uh, hopefully you found the video helpful. If you did, do me a favor and give the video a thumbs up. It really does help more than you might realize. Also, uh, as I've mentioned, my last few videos after December 31st of 2021, YouTube channel memberships are going away. So if you still want to gain at early access to uh, to the stuff that I post here, definitely head over to Patreon, become a, a, a channel patron. That would be cool. And you'll get early access and, and direct contact, that sort of thing uh, through Patreon. So that's definitely something to consider as well. Of course, if you don't want to do that uh, and you want to support the channel any other way, there are links for uh, coffee and PayPal and, and all kinds of stuff in the description uh, as well. So definitely take a look at that if you want to do that. But I think with all of that being said, uh, I want to give a big shout out to uh, all of my channel members and patrons so far. I want to wish everybody here uh, happy holidays, and I will talk to you guys in the next video.